Amen, amen. Hey, if you got a Bible, go ahead and flip open to uh, Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. Uh, that will be the main place where we are camped out today. So go ahead and flip there. Um, and uh, this morning, uh, the Lord put something on my heart to confess. He said you, you, uh, to repent of. And, uh, and I don't know how you were, but a lot of us made mistakes in college. And, um, and college was not my greatest time. And, and one time I went to a UK basketball game and I wore blue. I repent this morning. I lay it down at the altar, right? Um, but here's the deal. I love basketball. I'm a basketball fan. Now I'm Rocky Top till I die. The big orange, baby. We're about to get it. Right, listen, we're coming. Just hold on. Just hold on. We're, we're going to be back. And uh, it might be after I die, but it's going to happen, all right? Listen, but, uh, but uh, I went and I had a buddy who lived at uh, Kentucky. And he had, it was back when they let the students come in and you could use your ID to get into the game for free. And so he invited me to come up to the game. And so I come and I put on blue and, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and put this down. I'm feeling more unholy the more I hold it. And um, actually, hey, Katie, let's just, let's just leave it down there. I can't even leave it on the stage to look at. Um, it's funny, the lady in the first service was sitting right behind me and she saw the Kentucky hoodie and she said, you better not say anything about my team, Pastor Sam. And uh, it was before I preached, I'm like, how does she know, you know? And then I look out and my brother on the left side is just all in blue. I'm like, oh, I got something for y'all today. And so, but I went and... Um, and I, I used his buddy's idea. He had a buddy named Connor that we looked similar at the time. And so he gave me Connor's ID. And so I get my blue on. I have Connor's ID. And I'm walking through the line. And, I, you know, and they say, hey, welcome, Connor. We're glad that you're here at Rupp Arena. And at first I'm like, my name's Sam. What are you talking? You know, but I stopped myself. I'm like, yes, sir. I'm all Connor today, baby. Go Big Blue. And I get in the, the arena. And, and if you like basketball, I mean, Rupp Arena, I can't deny it, even though I don't like Kentucky, it's a great basketball atmosphere. It's a great basketball environment. And so I'm in there. And at first, you know, I'm kind of mild-mannered, you know. And, but as the game goes on, you know, by the fourth quarter, um, you, you, you probably couldn't tell any difference in me from anybody else. You probably thought I was a big blue fan my whole life. I mean, I'm going, everybody's got these vanilla ice cream cones. I wouldn't got me one. I'm doing the chance, go big blue. You know, I'm screaming and yelling and hollering. And by the end of the game, you probably thought, man, this guy doesn't look any different than anybody else who's in this arena right now. This guy has probably grown up living this way his whole life. This guy, and no, you know what else, came in under a different identity that wasn't even his own, someone else's ID. You say, what does this have to do with anything? I'm afraid that maybe a lot of us as Christians of Jesus Christ, as followers of Jesus, man, at one time maybe we were on fire for Jesus, we were living for Jesus, we were transformed by Jesus, and we were all about him. But maybe over time, the truth is that we've conformed to the world around us. And maybe, just maybe, we're living our life and we're living it with a fake ID to where we're called a son or daughter of God, but we're really living with a different ID and no one would acknowledge us as a son or daughter of God. They never hear anything about Jesus. They never see anything about Jesus. Our life doesn't look anything like Jesus. So we're really living with a fake ID and a different identification than the one that we claim to have. Not only that, but they probably look at us and say, you're cheering for the things of the world. You're passionate about the things of the world. You desire the things of the world. When we hear you and we hear your heartbeat, it sounds more passionate and more excited and more desired about the things of the world than it does about Jesus. And the sad reality is maybe they look at our life and they say, we would have never guessed that you were a Jesus follower. And here's the reality that I want to speak to us on today. Romans 12, 1 to 2. It's very easy. Here, I say that, but it's very easy for us to be slowly conformed to the world around us. For us to slowly let the things of the world into us. And over time, we become numb to the things of God and not to the things of the world. You know, even lately... The Lord convicted me on, I, I was watching some Netflix shows and binge watching Netflix shows that everybody, made, maybe it was culturally accepted, even in the church, everybody talks about that episode last night and one day the Lord just kind of punched me in the face and he said, hey, you're watching this show every night and it's really going against everything that I've said to do. Like it's not glorifying me at all, it's not pointing you to me, it's feeding your life and filling your life with all the wrong things. And you ever been in something where you, all of a sudden you begin to fill your life with it and all of a sudden you're like on the edge of, the, of your seat and all of a sudden you're all about it and you're like, why? What just happened to me? Like I've watched some of those shows, y'all are gonna laugh at me, but all of a sudden it'll be about drug dealing and all of a sudden I'm like, oh man, I'm gonna go join the, the cartel or the mafia, right? Like, you know, and I'm thinking of scheme and all this. And then I'm like, wait a second, those are bad guys. Like, what am I doing? What I'm saying is that stuff can just creep in so easily and then all of a sudden we've let all this stuff come in and you know what the Lord did again? He punched me in the face again. He said, you're spending all your time doing this. How much time are you spending with me? 
How much time are you spending in my word? How much time are you spending praying? How much time are you spending fasting and praying? We'll talk about fasting later, but you know, fasting is really a great practice. It disconnects you from the things of the world and connects you with God. You basically say, I'm giving up something I desire, and every time you desire that, you're praying, you're reminded, you're turning your thoughts to God. And, and I just began to think, man, so slowly, without me even noticing, I'd begun to let things creep into my life. And things that I maybe used to look at and said, oh my gosh, that's not glorifying to God. Nothing was going off on the radar. Because slowly the world around us can begin to conform us and we begin to look like it, talk like it, sound like it, and do the exact same things. And Romans 12, 1 and 2 says this. It says, therefore, brothers and sisters, in view of the mercies of God, I urge you to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true worship. Do not be conformed to this age, But be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may discern what is the good, pleasing, and perfect will of God. I want to encourage you. Two verses. Take these throughout the week. Meditate on them. Memorize them. Put them on your car. Put them on your mirror. Put them somewhere in your house. Let me read it again. Therefore, brothers and sisters, in view of the mercies of God, I urge you to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true worship. Do not be conformed to this age, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may discern what is the good, pleasing, and perfect will of God. Now, I want to talk to us about three things this morning that I think can uh, look at our lives when we look at Romans 12, 1 and 2 of how we can be a living sacrifice unto God. Living sacrifice would be the title of this one, but point one I want to make is emptying. And I want you to, to think about this with me. Some of us are reading that saying, living sacrifice, what in the world is that? But let's take a few steps back and realize that the people who were reading this at the time, this would have made perfect sense to them. People were familiar with sacrifices. People were familiar with sacrifices before and during. And and think about this. What happened all throughout the Old Testament? People would take sacrifices. They would take an animal. They would bring it before the Lord. And they would take their best animal. And it it would change based on your social status. So the animal that you bring would would line up with maybe you are socially, uh, economically. So you might bring a bird. Or if you're wealthy, you might bring something else. An animal of more wealth, right? Uh, a, A bull or a sheep or a goat. And you'd bring it before God. You'd take your best one not the worst one, and then they would go through all this process of cleaning and all this stuff at ceremony. You'd lay it on the altar, and then they would burn it, and the smoke would come up, and they would say they're doing it so that it was a pleasing aroma to God, and it was covering the forgiveness of their sins. And there's different offerings that you find in the Old Testament, but uh, a lot of them uh, had to do with fire on the altar, and the burnt offering uh, really was where they took, and, and they said, hey, this is for the forgiveness of sin, and they'd burn the entire animal on the altar. Now, look at this too. Leviticus 1.9 says this, then the priest will burn all of it on the altar as a burnt offering, a fire offering of a pleasing, pleasing aroma to the Lord. Why am I telling you this? Because I'm giving you the picture of what people would do for years and for centuries, all pointing forward to the great sacrifice, Jesus Christ himself, who would come, live a perfect, sinless life, go to the cross for us to be the sacrifice for all of us. His blood would cover us. His blood would be the sacrifice for us. He got up out of the grave three days later, said, if you choose to accept me in your life, I'll come in your life, and you can live for me on this earth, and you can spend eternity with me one day in heaven, so you no longer have to sacrifice animals because the blood of Jesus has covered that and was the perfect sacrifice for all. But think about this, living sacrifice. These people are taking something and they are burning it on the altar and it's being consumed on the altar with the fire. The smoke's going up and it's a pleasing aroma to the Lord to cover the forgiveness of their sins. So when the writer's saying this, he's saying, I want your life to be a living sacrifice. Your life should be something where you're emptying everything out to God. It's being consumed by God. The fire of God's burning it up, and it's a pleasing aroma to God. Now, here's the hard part with that. It sounds great, but you know what's so hard for us sometimes? To give up our desires, our passion, our wants, what we think is good in life, and to empty it all out before God. And say, God, here I am. 
The great news today is that you don't have to clean up before you come like they clean the animals. You can come as you are and say, God, here I am in the middle of my mess with all my baggage, with all that I am. Take all of me. I'm giving it all of you. Consume all of me. Burn out the things that don't glorify you and let me be a pleasing aroma to you. But sometimes that's a battle. And sometimes it's a battle because we don't want to empty out before God. We don't want to lay down everything that we're holding on to. We don't want to let go of some of the things that we really enjoy. We don't want to remove some of the things in our life that don't glorify God. We don't want to uh, give it up because we like it. And so we hold on with one hand and we say, oh, I'm all about Jesus. Or even more, you know, think about this. We live in an age where it's very hard to empty out because we live in an age where it says, do whatever you'd like to do, do whatever uh, that feels good, looks good, uh, sounds good, and just throw Jesus on top of it and it'll all work out. Friends, I don't find that anywhere in Scripture. And sometimes we've all lost the art of repentance, of coming before God. I've got to do it too and say, Lord, forgive me for my sin. I'm emptying it out before you. Forgive me for, for these things in my life. Take it from me, God. And I don't think that it's a one-time process. I think that you can empty out every day of your life. Lord, here I am laying down the sins in my life, the, the, the problems I have in my life. I'm emptying out before you. Here I am. Do something with me today. But for some of us today, the truth is we haven't emptied out anything in a long time. We haven't laid anything down in a long time. And we're, so we're saying, God, I want to be a living sacrifice to you. God, I want my life to be a pleasing aroma to you. God, I want to be all about you. I want the promises. I want the blessings. I want the eternity. But God, but we don't want to empty out. And God's saying probably to some of us today, I can't feel what's already full. I can't feel something that's already full of so many passions, desires, and things of the world. When you want to come to me and say, God, here I am, and I'm laying down everything inside of me that, that doesn't line up with you, and I doesn't glorify you, and that doesn't look like you, God, here I am, a broken man and sinner laying it down before you, then God says, okay, now I can do something with that. Now, I want to show you something in Galatians 5, 17 through 21. We're going to talk about the Spirit here in a second, but we all desire things that don't glorify God. We all have a fleshly desire in us, a fleshly side of us that takes us and can drift us away with, from God. Think about this. Who had to teach you ever at a young age to be selfish? Who had to ever teach you how to be prideful? Who ever, ever, ever had to tell you how to do the wrong thing? I mean, if you're like me, you've been doing the wrong thing for a long time, all right? We all have this fleshly side in us that we have to battle against and, and empty out and be filled with the Spirit. Listen to Galatians 5, 17 through 21. For the desires of the flesh are against the spirit, and the desires of the spirit are against the flesh. For these are opposed to each other, to keep you from doing the things you want to do. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are evident, sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. I warn you as I warned you before that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. I probably just named all of us at one point or another in that category. Because all of us have temptations or we struggle with something or we've done something and we fall in that category. Let me read it again. Sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. Fill in the blank for anything else I didn't name. But that probably puts us all in the same boat that we've all done one of those things or we're all tempted by one of those things or we all deal with one of those things. And what I want to tell you today is all of us have temptations, all of us have struggles, all of us have things in our life that drift us from God, but the, but the, the deal is this, if you're willing to repent and to daily empty that out before God and be filled with the Spirit, you don't have to live in that temptation, in that struggle, in that sin as far as you don't have to live in that sin. You may be tempted, but you don't have to live in bondage of that sin. He can set you free from that sin. And the hard part is this, is when you begin to live and you live in that sin and you don't even feel bad about it anymore. And you're numb to the things of God. And you're so lost right now that you don't even know how to get out. You've been playing the game called church for a long time where you come in and you hear the message and you hear the worship and then you leave and you go right back to getting drunk. You come in, and then you leave, and you go back right back to whatever it is. And I've said this before, but I want to remind us that there's different consequences for different sins. 
but sin is sin. And it's all level at the foot of the cross. And I know when I'm speaking to a group this large at home and in the room that there's somebody in this room who's dealing with homosexual attraction. There's someone in this room who's dealing with their gender identity. There's someone in this room who's dealing with drunkenness and they're getting drunk all the time. There's someone in this room who has text messages in their phone right now planning to cheat on their wife or their husband. There's somebody in this room right now who, man, they've got so much pride in their life. They're consumed with pride and they need to lay it down. There's people in this room who have so much selfishness built up and I want you to hear something today all across this room and at home. Listen to me. Jesus loves you and he'll say, come as you are, but he does not agree with your sin. And I'm not going to lie to you today and say, hey, it's okay. What Jesus is saying, I love you no matter what you're dealing with. For a long time, maybe we said, hey, if that person deals with homosexuality, they're worse than me because I get drunk every night. Or if that person deals with transgender and identity, they're worse than me, but I'll cheat on my wife. Sin is sin. And what I'm telling you, if you're dealing with something today at home or in the room, we're here to walk with you. We're here to say we love you and we're in this battle with you, but we're also here to say your sin is not okay. It's not glorifying to God and you can never live a life pleasing to God with that in your life. And so we're here to say this, lay it down. Lay it down. Whatever it is, we all have it. But empty it at the altar of God and say, God, here I am. I'm laying down my desires. I'm laying down my passions. I'm laying down my sin at the feet of Jesus. Consume it and come over me and help me fight this battle and let your spirit fill me. And would I walk in your spirit and not in the flesh? And God, would I be a pleasing aroma to you? Let me just remind us today before we move on to the second point. But just because you desire something or want something or it feels good for a moment doesn't make it right. Take whatever sin it is. Let's just use something that maybe is out there. Just because a husband says, I have a desire to go sleep with other women doesn't make it right. I use that as a generic one because fill in the blank on anything else. Gender, sexuality, drunkenness, pride, selfishness, ambition, whatever it is, fill in the blank. It's about surrender to Almighty God. And if you really, really read, you'll find what the Lord says in, the, in his Bible, in his word. And I, and I want to just make sure I say this in a loving way, that if you're dealing with those things, it's okay. And even more than that, let me go another step further. I'm glad that you're either in the room or that you're watching right now. And I'm here to say that we love you and we want to walk alongside you and you don't ever have to be afraid to come down to the altar or to tell somebody that you're struggling with it. I'll never forget, my wife has a good friend. I wasn't going to share this, but she dealt with um, same-sex attraction. And she shared with me on the phone one time as I was talking through it, she said, Sam, she said, I know that it's wrong, but I never felt like I could talk to anybody at church about it. Friends, we gotta do better. We gotta do better. And I'm here to say that if you empty it out, we're here to love you and walk with you. Number two, today. Let me read this actually to you before I move on to number two, but uh, this is about a guy named Walter Wilson uh, Jr. And, uh, and this is what he said at one time in his life. He was a great soul winner for Christ, a man who lived for the Lord. This is what he said. Just now I give you this body of mine from my head to my feet. I give it to you. I give you my hands, my limbs, my eyes and lips, my brain and all that I am within and without. I hand over to you for you to live in it the life that you please. You may send this body to Africa or lay it on a bed with cancer. You may blind the eyes or send me with your message to Tibet. You may take this body to the Eskimos or send it to a hospital with pneumonia. It is your body from this moment on. Help yourself to it. Thank you, my Lord. I believe you have accepted it. For in Romans 12 and 1, you said, acceptable unto God. Thank you again, my Lord, for taking me. We now belong to each other. That's someone who said, I'm emptying out everything before the Lord. Take my hands, take my feet, take my limbs. If you want to give me pneumonia, if you want to send me to a different country, Lord, I'm emptied out before you. Take it as you will. And do with it as you will. Number two, though, that I'll give you is filling. Filling. 
You know, I, I believe that every single one of us, when we receive Jesus Christ to be our personal Lord and Savior, that we receive the Holy Spirit as a seal of our salvation. But I also believe that uh, there's different fillings of the Holy Spirit, that you can be filled with the Holy Spirit. And I'm not, not getting into an argument on tongues and all that stuff. I'm just saying you can be filled with the Spirit to walk in the Spirit. Listen to Ephesians 5.18. And don't get drunk with wine, which leads to reckless actions, but be filled by the Spirit. Acts 4.31. When they had prayed, the place where they were assembled was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak God's message with boldness. Listen to Galatians. Galatians 5 and listen to what it says in 22 but the fruit of the spirit is love joy peace patience kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness self-control we used to sing a song in uh, 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 Sunday school uh, one time when I was growing up. Sunday school, that's a throwback right there. Um, uh, the fruits of the Spirit are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. That's some singing right there. Come on, baby. <laughs> uh, but listen to it. And, and, and of, against such things there is no law and those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires and if we live by the spirit let us also keep in step with the spirit and what I'm telling you today is that we need to be filled with the spirit of God so that we live with the love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness faithfulness, gentleness, self-control that comes with the spirit of God instead of the things of the flesh that we need to say Lord fill me afresh with your spirit today let me desire the things of you let me desire you more than I desire the things of the world let me walk by your spirit and live by your spirit so that I don't live by the things of the flesh even more let me challenge you with this not only that but be filled with his word the word of God taste and see that the Lord of the Lord is good man he's the bread of life he's the living water and I, I want to ask you this if you never hunger for the bread of life how much do you eat of it if you never thirst for the living water how much do you drink of it we crave and we desire a lot of times what we spend the most time doing and experiencing and being a part of and I just want to encourage you, man, set aside that time to say, I'm getting in the word of God and I'm spending time to let his word come in me and let it sink from my head into my heart so that I can hold it hidden down in my heart and walk by the word of God. I'm going to pray with God. Let me ask you this today. What relationship would be good without communication? If I said I wasn't going to talk to my wife for six months, she'd probably leave me and all you would look at me and say, you've lost your mind. But how many of us probably go months or weeks or days without talking to almighty God? And so there's no, we can't sense a relationship. We can't sense God in our life because we don't have any communication with God. And if you're struggling with how to pray, how to get in the word, we've got people who'd love to walk with you through that. But even more, let me just tell you, you know what praying is? It's just talking to God. Just start talking to him. Start reading. We'll give you places to read. Start in John 1. That's a great place to start. And then spend that time just saying, Lord, fill me today. You know what I've been doing too? I've been taking worship music and just taking those headphones and just putting them in my ear and just blasting that worship music. And sometimes I don't feel like it, but I'm saying, you know what, I just need to hear it. Boom, come over me. I mean, this morning at 6.30, you would have thought I lost my mind. Jamie and Demarie right here, man, they, they both texted me last night. They were staying up late, I was asleep. And uh, it wasn't late, it was like 9.41, but I was out. So I knew I gotta get up and bring the word, baby, I was ready. And, uh, but I, wake up, I woke up about 5.30 and I see them, I said, you gotta listen to this song, Pastor Jamie, you gotta listen to this song. It's called Mercy. And I, and I turned it on this morning. Man, about, about 6.30 in the morning, you would have thought I lost my I mind. Mean, I'm having a praise party up in my house at 6.30 in the morning. I'm like, let's go. Why? Because the promises of God, the praises of God, the glory of God, all that, I'm just getting fired up about it in my house. And I just want the things of God to come in my life, to come over my life. Really, really look at your life and think, how much time do I put the things of God in my life and how much time do I spend putting so much other things in my life? You know what I did this week? I took one of those apps that are on my phone. There's 55 million of them now. I don't even know what they're all called. I, I can't even keep up. But you know what I did this week? I thought, man, I'm spending too much time on it. There's stuff popping up I don't want to see. I just deleted that thing and took it off. I just want to tell you, there's things maybe in your life today that you need to delete, you need to remove, you need to throw it out, and you need to say, you know, I love Jesus more than this. Get out of my life. Get out of my life. I'm not going to sacrifice it. You know, about a month ago, I look over, and I see Pastor Tom before he's about to preach, and he's down on the ground like this during the last song. And I had a couple thoughts. I thought, number one, is that brother Okay. Number two, I thought, what message do I have in the back of my head? Because I'm number two, and I'm about to be up. I'm about to get called out of the bullpen, ready in season and out of season. I'm like, please get up, please get up, please get up. 
But then I realized and I thought, you know what? He's about to preach the word of God. And I don't know what's going on in his life right now, but he's getting before the Lord and he's emptying himself out and he's saying, Lord, fill me afresh before I bring your word today. I just believe God and says, hey, if you'll get low before me, I'll exalt my name. And last week, you know, we act like we have it all figured out sometimes. But as pastors and, and stuff, there's a lot of stuff that we don't, we don't know. We don't have the answer to. I could lie to you and say, oh, yeah, here's what to do in this situation. Sometimes I just don't know. And there was a situation last week where I didn't know what to do, and I was thinking, what do I do? And I just, I went down in the prayer clinic, and I got down like this. And I just began to pray, and I just began to pray and intercede and give it all ahead and praying and praying and praying. And I thought, what if somebody comes in this room right now? They're going to think I've lost my mind. Some of you already think that because you're thinking like, man, I grew up deep Southern Baptist. You're talking about the Holy Spirit. About as clear as day. You know what I heard the Lord say? I heard him say this. Hey, you're a pastor, and you're at church right now. People should see you more like this than they ever see you standing on a platform preaching. And whatever I was praying about, I just got still for a moment. And I just listened. And I'm not making this up. But when I got up, the Lord gave me a word. I got up and I walked in. It was like the peace of God and the Spirit of God just came over. And I was able to walk right in that situation and let the Lord speak right through me. And I'm not lying to you. There was no fear. There was no worry. There was no thought anymore because I had emptied out and the Spirit of God had come over and I said, let's walk. God's got this. I'm not telling you that just for a feel-good story. I'm telling you that because of this. There are situations that I have to look at as a pastor and say, there's no doctrine, there's no theology, there's no great articulate word that I can spend to make something change in this moment. The only thing I can do is get before the Lord Almighty say God I don't know what to do fill me afresh give me the words to say give me the strength to do it let me respond in the right way let me act as you call me to act number three that I want to give you this morning is igniting I believe when we start empty in our life you know what I call those a lot of times fire stoppers fire stoppers in our life they're things that stop the fire of God from coming in our life and so we're emptying those out before him and when we begin to fill ourselves and ask the Holy Spirit to fill it afresh to get in the word of God to pray to spend time with God I call those fire starters and you know what happens when you begin to empty out and then you begin to fill all of a sudden you get to have some embers start glowing and a little smoke start going and things start happening you ever watch those old uh, like survivor shows or man vs wild you know growing up I used to watch those shows and, and like I'm like who wants to do that like I know some of y'all love camping I'm like no put me in a hotel right like why I gotta do that now like I don't live in that age no more I can sleep with a real bed and not have to worry about it if I want to go in the woods I'll go out there and shoot something then I'll come back and sleep in the bed right and, and but you know you go out there and you watch those shows and they're like we're on day three and and if we don't find food now or if we can't make a fire we're going to be gone and we can't make it any more days and like then they have thunder in the background I'm like is that real or is that tv you know and uh but then you have that moment where they're like you know stoking the fire and the guy's rubbing two sticks together and then he'll stop (laughs) he's blowing it blowing it blowing it and then the smoke starts coming and a lot of times they don't get the fire started and they find a way later you know but but they're just "Ah!" (laughs) and then you see the smoke Here's the thing. I think when you start emptying yourself out before God and you start filling yourself with the things of God, the smoke starts coming. The embers start glowing. And then you know what I believe happens? Just like the song we sang earlier, the Holy Spirit begins to breathe out over you. A fresh wind that ignites a fire in your life. And all of a sudden, instead of conforming to the world around you, you don't conform. Because you've emptied yourself of the things of the world. You've filled yourself with the things of God. He's ignited a fire in you. You're burning for the things of God and not the things of the world. And all of a sudden, you've been transformed, not conformed. And so to everybody else in this world, you look different. To everybody else, they're saying, I don't know what that brother's got or what that sister's got, but I need it because there's something glowing from them. There's something burning from them. There's something about them that's different because the Holy Spirit has ignited something in you to burn within you where you look different than the world around you I want to illustrate this to you real quickly today you know 
we do live in a hard world. And there's a lot of things that happen. And there's a lot of things that take place. You know, even just before I came up for the nine o'clock, someone asked me to pray. He said, hey, would you pray? There's a lot of people are struggling right now because one of our friends that we work with committed suicide. Friends, without Jesus, it's hard with Jesus. And without Jesus, it's real dark, real dark. And there's things that all kinds of people face. There's kinds of things that all kinds of people deal with. There's things that all kinds of people are walking through right now. And when we just conform to the world, we look no different. You guys, just go ahead and bring those down. You know what happens in this world? It can be really dark sometimes. Your workplace can be really dark sometimes. Your home life can be really, really dark sometimes. The life you're walking around in can be really dark sometimes. And when we conform to the world around us, we just look like the darkness we see in this room. But when we begin to empty out before God and fill ourselves with Jesus Christ and the things of God, he transforms us. And he begins to ignite something in us. And we begin to look different than the world around us. You know what I love right now? Is that this whole room is dark. But no matter where you're sitting right now, everybody can see this light. And everybody can tell that there's something different about what's in my hand than all over this room. And you know what else I love? If I were to walk around I'm not because I trip and fall. But if I were to walk around this room right now, you know what would happen? The darkness wouldn't overtake this light. This light would push back the darkness everywhere that I walk in this room. Some of you have been before us on Christmas Eve, but if we were to take this candle and we were to light up this whole room with every single one of you, this room would be glowing right now. I just want to remind you this. This world's dark. And when you conform to the world around you, nobody sees the light. But when you say, God, I'm emptying out, fill me, and he ignites you, then everywhere that you're walking, you're carrying the light of Jesus Christ. Not because of anything you do, but because of everything he does. You guys, go ahead and bring those back up. And you begin to look different than the world around you. People see a difference. And you know what else they say? I've met a lot of people who didn't agree with me on a lot of things about Scripture and the Bible and Jesus. But a lot of those people, when something really happened in their life, you know what they've done? They've come and said, would you pray for me? Would you help me through this time? Because they knew something was different.